Why do we want to test this little trace mineral called molybdenum, uh, you might well ask. Well, you only need 0.5 of a part per million of this mineral. It's not much, just a couple of cups of sodium molybdate. And 85% of the soils we look at globally, and we're working in 52 countries, uh, are lacking that 0.5 of a part per million. And what does that mean and why is it important? Here's the two things. And I want you to try and remember the two things that you need to test molybdenum in your soil for. The first of those is that above every hectare on the planet is 74,000 tonnes of nitrogen gas. 5,000 truckloads of urea sit in there for the taking above every hectare, and that's where we were supposed to get a significant percentage of our nitrogen. And if we can achieve it from there, it's in the ammonium form. It's converted from the gas into the ammonium form of nitrogen by microorganisms, specific nitrogen-fixing organisms, and that gives us that preponderance of ammonium nitrogen when we want this three to one ratio. It's hard to achieve it if you're not getting a bunch for nothing. The free gift, if you're not gaining access to the free gift, you're gonna to struggle to get that three to one all important a loading of ammonium because it's delivered in an ammonium form. So how does it work? Well, you've got the creatures that live in the little nodules on leg ends called rhizobium, and they fix nitrogen. And there's another equally important group of organisms who crowd around every plant root. They're called free living nitrogen fixers, waiting for their feed of sugar from the plant. And in return with that energy source, they fix nitrogen. Uh, and to do, it, do that, both of those creatures make an enzyme called nitrogenase. And nitrogenase allows the conversion of gas to ammonium nitrogen. What's it made of? Two minerals. Iron, usually not a problem, the world's most abundant mineral, and the mineral that is a problem, because 80% of soil tests we look at are lacking it, molybdenum. You can't fix nitrogen without molybdenum. You can't make the enzyme that fixes it. And, and you want to see some of the studies. The most famous of the molybdenum studies involves the New Zealand Ag Department uh, in the south, Waitaki County uh, in New Zealand, uh, where they added one cup of sodium molybdate to the superphosphate fertiliser. Two soil types, uh, clay and a sort of a, a sand on um, lucin and, and, and rape. And the yield increases from that one cup of sodium molybdate ranged from the lowest yield increase of 38% to the largest of 603%. And that can only be, of course, nitrogen, the most abundant mineral in the plant and the one that drives yield, that now you had access to the free gift, to that small amount of molybdenum. So you've got to test it. You have to know where you're at if you want to get the free stuff. It's a no-brainer. And why would you want to test cobalt on your soil test? Because we now know that cobalt, which is also lacking in over 50% of soils, you need two parts per million. Uh, it's mother's milk for nitrogen-fixing organisms. They're not going to do their role. They're not going to access that in the absence of cobalt. So we want cobalt tested. And why would we want to tag even more obscure trace mineral called selenium. Now here's the story with selenium. Selenium, the most important organ in your body is your liver, not your heart. Your liver is the most important, and the most important mineral for the most important organ is selenium. Now the problem here, in your country, and in mine, and in New Zealand, uh, although I shouldn't say mine because I'm actually from New Zealand, but Australia and New Zealand, um, the, most, the deal is that we've got the lowest levels of selenium on the planet. Uh, this African continent, with the ex exception of Senegal, which has up to 400 times more than anywhere else in Africa, and 0.02% HIV compared to up to 49% in the rest of the country, because this is part of the role of this uh, hugely important trace mineral called selenium. And it's not there in Africa. We are what we eat. What we eat uh, it comes from soils, and soils aren't, aren't what they used to be. And we already inherited naturally low selenium here. Um, <laughs> So does that mean anything for animals? Well, animals it does for sure. I mean, this extreme version of selenium deficient is white muscle disease, but any deficiency of selenium is going to compromise the det detoxification capacity uh, and the immune capacity of that animal uh, and the human beings eating that animal. So in Australia, the CSIRO gave a grant to uh, the Virginia branch, which is uh, out from Adelaide, to test selenium and vegetables grown in that state for six months. They couldn't find one part, it's a published paper, they couldn't find one part per billion selenium in a single vegetable test in a six months period, five days a week. Nothing, zero, zilch. Every person in your country is worse than ours. Every person needs selenium on a daily basis, 200 micrograms uh, is the minimum that has been shown to be of tremendous benefit, particularly in reducing tumour size in the case of cancer. Uh, one of the most powerful single known tools, and we're taking higher doses now, we're talking 600 micrograms for that purpose, but hugely important, and 
we are slowly coming to recognize that there's nothing really that impacts humans and animals that doesn't actually impact cells. It's all about a cell as a cell as a cell. And we now find the finished research from last year uh, was potatoes where they got a 30% mean increase in net tuber weight uh, from 250 parts per million of selenium applied three times during the season. Uh, and so our biggest selling fertiliser in this country, we now call triple 10, we add 250 parts per, per million of selenium along with the uh, 25, 30 other ingredients in that quite remarkable liquid fertiliser, but it makes a difference with and without it. Uh, and, uh, and what they found and how they explained this increase, the, this Finnish scientist, they said it was uh, reduced photooxidative stress. What does that mean? Well, a plant's got to stand there from 5 o'clock in the morning till 5 o'clock at night. There are no other living organisms that can stand in UV radiation without suffering free radical damage. There's no one known who can do that. Everyone gets cancer standing out there in the sun, so the dogs and, uh, and cows, uh, if they're not un completely unprotected, are liable to suffer from free radical radiation, from UV radiation, free radical attack from UV. Well, how does a plant do it? Well, one thing they've just discovered is that it uses selenium with three amino acids, which is exactly what we use in our system, uh, called glutathione, and it makes glutathione peroxidase, which protects it from UV radiation. And, it, and, and in the absence of selenium, it's got to use a bunch of other energy to do that same job. And when you provide the selenium, that energy can go on to yield, 30% increase in yield. Uh, and that's a pretty neat finding, very first finding. Now the Chinese are doing research and finding a similar thing with rice production. Uh, so it's important for uh, plants, humans and animals. Uh, so we're going to test selenium and see if we've got the minimum doses and see if there's a gain in getting some selenium into our crops.